just some thoughts about what's happened today? Well, I think it's great. I think it's great for the conference and uh, something that the league's been working on for a long time. And I think to be able to go out and get somebody as successful and that has the national reputation that TCU does, not only in football but in all sports, and a very highly reputable university and institution, I think it's just a great addition for the program. Do you need to add a 10th team? How do you feel about nine in football? Well, I, I think, you know, when we went to our November meeting with the presidents in Philadelphia, that was the one thing that came out of it, that we were going to be on the offensive side of it and move and be aggressive at, towards expansion. And I don't think anybody put a, a single number on there. Was, was it going to be one, two, three, four, five, six? And I think they just said if it's going to be the right one. And obviously, TCU's been in the works for a long, long time. I, I, you know, I really applaud the commissioner, John Marinato, for what he did starting in early summer when, when it looked like the Big East might be vulnerable to some of these rumors. And uh, I think he took, he took a very proactive stance, brought Paul Tagliabue in, which I think was a stroke of genius, and has uh, really moved this, moved this conference forward. What does this do for you guys, for the league, in terms of either protecting against other ratings or also, also just image-wise and being in Dallas? Well, I've always liked the, the, the idea of being in the Dallas-Fort Worth area uh, simply because we have a great history with them from Commerce USA, and it was a very productive history. Uh, they've, they've been a good partner of ours before, and uh, we've obviously had great competition with them and played some great games with them in all sports. Uh, but the, the key thing, I think, it, what it does, it gives us another, uh, another very, very large city with great exposure, with a lot of new growth areas for us that we can really redevelop. And I know, just talking to Dr. Ramsey, we've got three or four big alumni groups down in that area that you know really pretty much are untapped that always were afraid that we'd never get a chance to come back to once we left Conference USA. So it's great that we're being able to have a great reunion like this. If Villanova doesn't make the move up, do you, is there another school you think that they, the Big East will target? Is oh, I'm sure that, that they've been working on quite a bit. I know that John's asked everybody not to talk publicly about it, and the president said, you know, Villanova certainly is the obvious one because they're already in the footprint. But, the, you know, the rest of them, you know, I know there's a lot of schools that the, that the conference and all the presidents have looked at. And, and the, I think the number one thing they're looking at for Ken is that they want, they want a great fit. You said there's no magic number, Tom. Would they stop at 10? Could they go to 12? I, I don't think it, I, if I told you 10 or 12, I'd be, I wouldn't be telling you the truth because I don't know. I, I think that if it's the right thing to do and it's the right schools, they're going to continue to grow. And everybody said 16 teams was too much. Now we have 17. So, <laughs> is, is the ultimate goal 12 teams so you can get a, a championship, or is that not the model really? I don't anymore? think it's ever been a discussion yeah. for us. That we've never said, let's have a championship game. Mm -hmm. and I think the championship game works very well in the SEC. You know, I think uh, other, other uh, leagues, they, they debate it. Mm -hmm. This begs the question, Tom, does the league start to get unwieldy on other sports when you get up 17, 18 teams, uh, basketball, baseball? Well, you got to figure it out. I mean, I think when we started, when we went to 16 with the basketball, people thought that too, and I think that's worked very, very well for everybody. You know, I think right now that the important thing for us to do is get schools that are our like and that are very much alike and that are, can be good peers and, and great uh, great competitors. So I, I don't think so. I really don't. I think there's many ways you can move it around, whether it's divisions, whether it's north, south, east, west. You know, I don't think that's going to be an issue at all. Back in 2004, uh, TCU and Conference USA, what have they done program-wise to kind of get themselves ready for this kind of move? Well, I think they were very good when we were in Conference USA, and they went to the Mountain West, and they certainly did a great job there. You know, they're good in a lot of sports, and uh, you know, CL pointed out to me this morning, you know, they, were the, they were in the College World Series last year, so that, that really helps our baseball team out. And, and, you know, Dan, I know he's excited about it. You know, Charlie was extremely excited about it. And, you know, Coach, you know, we had some great games with TCU, you know. A couple times we were on the wrong end of it, you know, and, and so it's going to be good. So I don't, I don't think they had to go a long distance to, to bring their programs up to where they need to be. I think they're, they're very, very competitive right now, and I think they'll do very, very well in this league. Talk about your bowls. Bowls. Where you so, well, right now, you know, I feel very confident we're going to be in a bowl. Uh, I still feel 100% sure we'll be in one. If I, I couldn't tell you which one, though, mm -hmm. I think we're in play for a lot of them. Uh, you know, Notre Dame, Notre Dame, uh, if they take one of our slots, that, that obviously creates creates a new position for us. That we're going to have to be very creative in that. But I think the league knows that that we're a very attractive school for somebody, and our our fan base loves to travel. You know, the thing that we want to make sure of is that we exhaust you know, all of our options, and we want to make sure that we look, we look at what's best you know, for us too. And uh, you know, we, we've got a couple obstacles, that no, most notably being that December 31st date, and I'd hate to put that on our fans, but if it comes down to that and that, that's our only option, then we're going to have to go with it. 
but right now we're trying to work around that December 31st date so that everybody could be here for the, the, the UL-UK game in the Yum Center. How many have particular bowls contacted you already? Or well, I've talked that, to people, and I've talked to people all through the, you know, probably last half of the football season. Any idea how many bowls are in play for you, or is, that, is this still too early for you? There's, there's quite a few, Fred. There is quite a few. Because there's so many different uh, scenarios that play out. You know, it, does this conference have enough teams for their games? And those are the things that we're going to have to look at. Where do we fill in? Or whether it's us or somebody else in the conference, where do they fit in? Do you, you always say you want your coaches to be wanted. Do you, do you, Charlie's name came up uh, maybe with one report about Miami. You know people eventually. Sure. You know, if he wins here, people are going to come after him. Do you feel right. confident that he's going to stay here for a, a period of time? Is that? Well, every time I've said that, I've been wrong. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, but absolutely. I, you know, he's he's going to be he's going to be on top of everybody's list as he should be. You know, I I want to make sure that I do everything in my power to to keep him here for as long as he wants to be here. I think he's a tremendous tremendous coach, and he's done a great job with this program from A to Z. And not many people can say that from A to Z, and he's done it from A to Z. And he's got a great staff that he's assembled, and it's it's well documented the success that he's had in the classroom. He's just uh, he's everything that I could ever draw up for to be a head coach. So we're going to do everything in our power, and I, and I hope that him and his family, I know Vicky and the kids are very, very important to him, that they love it here as much as we love him. At this point, has anybody contacted you to talk Just to you? That's it. <laughs> it would be hard to do. I can't afford to be successful with that. I hope not. You know, I, hope it's, I hope he just sees it's a great place to be and that uh, and he could do some great things here. We're all going to get on the – we're all going to get on the – on the same page, and we're already on the same page. But everybody has to make sure that he has everything that he needs to, to be successful. Because I know he's got big dreams and big goals, and that's what I love. I like people to think big, and he does. Are you even surprised at how quickly? I mean, you have to be. You didn't expect six. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I didn't. I, I, I thought five would be a great year. I really did. I didn't know which the five would be, but I did think five would be a great year. Tom, do you know that uh, NCAA defensive rankings came out today, and we were eighth in total pass defense. 11th and 12th defense. That's pretty spectacular. That is sure is, Jack. That is. And he, you know, look at that staff. I mean, you know, Charlie loves to, he loves to give all the credit to his staff, and I, and I agree with him on that. But he, he was the man that was in a leadership role, and he took the bull by the horns from day one back in December 7th or 8th, whatever day I had the opportunity to hire him. And he's, he's, he hit the ground running and never stopped, and that's great. And I was with him pretty much most of the morning this morning, and he's, He's excited. He's excited to keep going. I think so. that's the highest in school history in total. Yeah, that's great. And we have a lot of young kids making plays. And it's amazing. He said at the beginning of the year that, that the defensive secondary was the spot that he was most concerned about. Yeah, they, they played well. Everybody played well. Right? They, they played with great effort, which is terrific. You said you guys talk. How does this work? I mean, if he gets contacted, would he reach out to you? I mean, how to, are you thinking about reconstructing his contract? And oh, yeah. We'll, we'll always talk about that. I always want to keep his contract. And, to be the, one of the best in the country, and I want to continue to, to to look at that. But I want to, you know, I want to make sure that he this is where he wants to be too. Most bowl projections just assume that Notre Dame will take a Big East bowl. Is that is that a correct assumption, or could Notre Dame venture out on their own? Howie, that's a good question. You know, I, I really don't know that answer. I, I don't think they could just venture out on their own because they've helped in all these agreements and helped with all the structure of it. Right. But I think the league, you know, they want to make sure all their bowls be. Bowl eligible teams are, are set to and mm -hmm. are in, in play, so uh, and I think there's enough for everybody to go around. It's just where you're going to land, mm -hmm. and I don't think anybody can predict that right now. Right. With so. TCU, um, excuse me. What are your thoughts just on the geography of the conference now and the travel expenses and that whole deal that we're talking about? Well, you know, the, when we were in Conference USA, everything worked out great. We we went to places that were farther. than I went to Houston, we went to New Orleans, which was more, much more expensive for us. It's easy to get into. You know, Providence might have a different answer to it than, than we do, but for us it works just fine. And, you know, as I was telling somebody earlier today, you know, Dallas has worked out pretty darn well in the NFC East for a lot of <laughs> years, and that, that that thing worked out good. So I think that's a problem now. You know, Tom, if you look at TCU's athletics program, it's a lot like ours mm -hmm. in the sports so that that they dominate Conference USA golf, tennis, some of those areas. Yeah. They're going to be a big competitor oh, with us in line. Which is great. Which is yeah. great. That's what you want. You always want great com competition. And we had it in Conference USA. That that was that was a great league that I think many people really underestimated. And, and look at a lot of those schools know what they're doing. How much can that help open up maybe Texas to recruiting for football-wise? Because obviously it's, you know, if, 
you're playing a game down there every year and with more exposure. Well, I think it, it, it's got to help, Ken. I don't know what their I don't know what Charlie's uh, philosophy is going to be about recruiting Texas, but it, it's certainly going to be an area that I think they'll want to look into. You know, I think they're with so much success in the, the Georgia, Alabama, Florida, et cetera areas. It's, it's important for us to stay in our footprint, which we see that as, a, as our footprint. But Texas, you have to look at that now. Tom, with the bowl games, you said you're hoping to work around the 31st. Do you or, or does the school have much say or any say in, hey, we really maybe like to go to this one if possible and not this no, one? No, you really don't, Tom. But to, the thing is, you think of yourself if you're a bowl director and, or executive director. If I'm coming to you and, and I know you're, a lot of your fan base is, is extremely loyal to both programs and you've got the opening, your biggest, one of your <coughs> biggest games of the year playing in your brand new facility, I don't know why I'd want to take that head on and, and, and create, a, create a challenge there for the bowl because the bowl wants us to travel and our fans have done such a phenomenal job over the years of traveling that that's one of our great staples and we want to make sure we keep that as a top asset. Do you have to guarantee a certain number of tickets that you'll sell for most bowls? Is that generally? A, yeah. We, what's the general? What's it really fluctuates. It fluctuates from I think as low as 7,500 to maybe up to 15. I think the BCS games were 17 and 17.5 or 18, something like that. Tom, talk about the basketball team a little bit. A little surprised at uh, success and the manner oh, yeah. they're playing. Yeah, for this, this team has done a great job, and I think the thing I like so much is the buzz around the community that everybody that everybody's excited about it. And obviously, the Big East will be an enormous challenge, which everybody sees. But this is a great team. I think that Rick is real excited about. It. Uh, you know, he he's always said he, he he really believes in chemistry and he believes in effort, and I think this team's got both of those things. What about your impressions of soccer the other night? They, they've had five thousand the last two weeks. Yeah, it's it's. Remarkable! It's remarkable to think that five years ago we were in last place in the Big East, and Ken Lola came in here and has us to number one in the nation. I think for what seven, eight weeks running, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's exciting. And the and the great thing is to watch him operate, and the, he's such a humble young man, and a, and a, and, a, and a, just a, a great leader of men. And how he's how, how poised his team stayed last night when when really Ohio State tried to intimidate them. You know, and he, he let all those cheap shots go by, by the way. And then those kids just stayed the course and won a great game. And it was, it's been a magical two weeks here for the soccer program.